Hi everyone, my name is Nina Gums and I am a junior at USC Kaufman and welcome to Opinions of an Artist, A Look at the Past Pushes Them Forward, where I have gotten the chance to speak with three different professors, ask them three of the same questions and they give me completely different answers. For our final episode of the series, we have Dr. Ron McCurdy. Thank you all so very much for the support and love on these videos. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> all right. Yes, thank you so, so much for, for doing this. Um, yeah, I'll just jump right in. So what is your take on Black History Month in the context of, you know, your upbringing and how it folded into your career? Mm. Well, uh, let me start by saying that I think Black History Month is relevant right now. We, we need to have this month. And I understand the whole rationale behind why we have it. Uh, my hope, however, and it's probably going to happen in my lifetime, that it will become obsolete. Mm. And I say that because Black history is American history. And we tend to try to fold a host of accomplishments by African Americans into one short month, like the shortest month, as we know. And my, my wish is that, and prayer is that, we, we could recognize the contributions of African Americans year round, just as we do white Americans' contributions. And we know that democracy and justice is not a, a linear approach that uh, it's, it's very much, a, a, I think we've seen it with the, you know, with the whole storming of the insurrection at the Capitol building, democracy was tested. I think that Black History Month is certainly important. I, I hope that we will continue to illuminate those names who have been lost to history, that we're not just known for our athleticism and our entertainment ability, that we were scientists, we were business people and had all kinds of obstacles placed in our way, but we were able to overcome and be resilient. But, but, but my parents were educators. My father was a high school principal and my mother taught third grade. So we had a, a consistent diet of black accomplishments. I mean, I remember as early as being in five, six years old, having to recite The Negro Speaks of Rivers by Langston Hughes. And we would talk about, constantly, about the accomplishments of African Americans. So uh, for me, it was never about a month. It was just about being very prideful of, of my race, where I came from. Our, as you know, our history tends to start with 1619. And our history goes much far, farther back than that. But yeah, so in, in my home, I, I mean, I was fortunate to have parents who recognized African-American contributions. My parents were all about making sure that we had a chance to tell our own history rather than being relegated to having someone else tell our history. I grew up in the South and in the South, the uh, history books would always refer to the Civil War as being about states' rights. It never talked about the real essence that being those who wanted to be able to maintain the right to own other people. It never said that in, in, in those kind of explicit terms. And that folds well into my next question about do you feel that there are, especially in your, your field of music, because I know for, personally for me, your class helped me to understand my history through sound, which is something I've always felt connected to as a dancer, but to hear the stories too that mm -hmm. really made big connections for me. So I'm wondering, especially in your field, do you feel like there are unsung heroes to a certain extent that we should be knowing about, educating ourselves on things that we would say, oh, I didn't know that. To give you an example, the other day in class, I was talking about this woman by the name of Pauline Murray, a name that I did not know, I must admit. Mm -hmm. She was known as Pauline Murray, and she was the only woman in her law school class at Howard University in 1944. They were, in, in, in her law school class, they were, they were uh, addressing the issue of separate but equal laws that were in vogue at the time. And she had the brilliant idea of why not, rather than talk about the separate part, why not focus on the equal part as a means of trying to obliterate separate, separate but equal laws. Her classmates, even her professor laughed at her saying, Pauli, that's the most idiotic idea I have ever heard of in my life. Lo and behold, this is exactly how they were able to shut down separate but equal laws. Like just going back and just finding those obscure names of individuals who made significant contributions. And plus she was a woman, obviously. 
She uh, was a, a groundbreaker. She was a trendsetter. So I think people like that need to be celebrated. And I think once you are able to, to be educated, then you're more inclined not to make statements that will make you sound like a buffoon. <laughs> I, I look at my role as an educator to, to go much deeper than just simply teaching people how to write music or perform music. Because I, I think a lot of our students in the class, many of whom are interested in music, don't necessarily embrace the entire culture. But you don't learn the music without, without embracing the culture. That, that has been my biggest pet peeve with higher education. We'll take your music, we'll learn how to play it, sing, and then we'll, but we don't care about your culture. Then you, then you don't understand the music. My last question for you is specifically for our allies. Um, they continue to try and grasp and understand and celebrate and respect. I think we need our white brothers and sisters to step up. We need for them to step up and to, to be more inclusive. Female representative for the National Basketball Association, black woman, she said diversity is being invited to the party, but inclusion is being asked to dance. We've not been invited to very many parties and we certainly have not been asked to dance. And the word white supremacy, it sounds like such a, a derogatory term, but it's very descriptive. It means that that particular race considers themselves to be supreme. Supremacist way of thinking, nothing else really matters in terms of other cultures. I remember at the end of our town hall meetings we had this past summer, Patrice Russian said, you need to read. That was her response. Just as you educate yourself and prepare for your classes, you need to do the same type of preparation for how you can, how you can address being more inclusive. As you can tell, I can talk for days. So you better you cut me off when, when, I, when I get to rambling on here, because I will go on. You know me. <laughs> so much. All right, now.